Ellis, obviously since the LSU game, pass defense has been not as productive, I guess, or efficient or whatever the word is. As you look at it, what do you say that's, that's causing it? Biggest thing this game were uh, some busted assignments on explosive plays. And, uh, you know, we just got to get some communication cleaned up back there. And uh, Whiteside, who had been out of the lineup, that was the most aged experience. And some of the younger guys going to have to get more, more uh, consistent. Uh, one positive thing, I thought we got a lot more pass pressure. You know, that, that improved this week. And uh, hopefully that's a good thing to build on going forward. Because I would say up until that time, that was our biggest issue, to get the ball out on time. But that wasn't as big of a problem this time. I mean, we had some breakdowns back there. we got to get them straight. What do you think the reason for the better pass rate was uh, last night compared to the last few we weeks? We've worked some guys in. We've tried to get the best best ones with the skill sets and the speed, uh, you know, to get it done. At times it was hard to serve because of their pace, but we were able to get them in the game and sort of help. You mentioned Whitehead. Is there any chance that he plays any defense? I, you know, not at this time. What have you seen? You moved some guys around, like you said, Brandon King. He got a lot, a little bit in there, a lot of the uh, unique packages and stuff like that. What have you been able to see from him and some of those other guys you counted on? Yeah, Brandon, you know, Brandon has as much uh, first step uh, ability and, and the speed off the edge, you know, anybody on the football team. There were a couple of th times he, he broke a, tw uh, busted a twist. And when that happens, you know, you have to get him off, get it cleaned up and so forth. So. He's got to bring that physical skill set, but he's also got to be consistent on his assignments because it's a risk when you put him out there if he makes a mistake. But he was one of them, and of course, we, uh, Pee Wee uh, Lambert has done a good job. We moved uh, Elijah inside and uh, you know, got Pee Wee outside. Uh, I thought that Gabe got better. You know, we rotated him in a little bit, and I thought he was more productive. And uh, also Blackson and Montrevious. So in, a, in some ways, it was just individuals stepping up the game a little bit. In other things, it was working some personnel in there and finally get the right combination of guys that get that speed uh, for the pass rush situation. Alex, was any of that, that possibly have to do with Tons on not playing? I mean, he, you know, he's our best offensive lineman and missed the entire game. Could have. You know, I, I, we noticed he got hurt. I couldn't remember exactly when he got hurt. But I thought our, our pressure was pretty good from the beginning, you know, on and through. Uh, even when we didn't sack him, we moved him out of the pocket a lot and, and uh, got a lot of hits on him. So no question it was the best game we'd had in that area. Ellis, you've had a lot of close calls, close wins, close losses over your career. Have you, can you remember one that last night feel like one from your past where you literally came down to probably been a foot? You know, I, I was at Alabama the year we beat LSU. A kid named Marvin Constant made a big stop on the goal line and took towards me up. Uh, and it was almost exactly the same, different, different type of play. It was a goal line play from short yardage. But it was very similar, only our player got hurt, and it did, you know, stop, it won the game. Uh, that's one that comes to mind. But I, you know, I've been involved in a lot of, it's hard to remember some of them, but that was, you know, unbelievable ending. You know, just things that were happening, and the unfortunate injury just sickens you. But uh, the ball to come out the way it did, the kids, leg was literally across the line, but the ball was not. The thing that was very unusual, we had a monitor in the press box that we could see real clearly, and they had unbelievable angles on the play. They had one from the front, one from the side, that you could tell that he was not across the goal line when the ball came out. And then you could also tell that he wasn't down when the ball came out. And then you could also tell clearly who recovered the ball, because that, from what we were getting feedback from down at the bottom, they were wrong on all of them. They thought he crossed the goal line. They thought he was down before it came out. And they thought they got the ball. And, and all three of them were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you're in zero on that spot and you see the play unfolding at the beginning of it, how quickly are you realizing that this is, this is probably not going to go your way? It, you know, it wasn't a great call to be in because, you know, the last time we, we played a, a little more cautious and they threw the ball over Mincy's head, he got a holding call. And then we got down on that big third down, and my decision was to bring, you know, bring pressure. So we under zero blitz, and they throw in a quick screen. And anybody will tell you, well, what do you not want to be in if somebody, if you know they're going to throw a zero blitz? So you put a lot of pressure on those man cover guys. We had great effort from inside out from the box. After they blitzed, they turned and ran. Had a couple of near misses, but we didn't force it real well. But it was a tough, tough assignment for those DVs to be in. 
And uh, it's one, you know, you have to make that call and hope, you know, you got the right thing on. Yes. But, uh, you know, we had not, they got the ball out vertically the play before, the last third down before. So that's why we wanted to bring pressure right there. And was, was, was Moncrief start more a function of him outplaying Hosey last week in practice, or did he fit the defensive game plan better? We, uh, Chiefs want to give some rotation. You know, uh, Josh didn't play well in the South Carolina game, and he rotated Rudy over and put uh, Moncrief in. And, you know, they, they all had some mistakes, though. You know, the very first touchdown was Moncrief. Uh, when they threw the little scramble route over there in the flat on a, on a late throw. And then, you know, later on, we got one to the tight end of the scene, and that was Hosey. And then we had another one the very first play of the second half. Uh, the safety's busting the pickup on the reverse. And you know, they should have been there on the reverse. So it was just a mixture of things. And, uh, you know, this communication's got to improve. It's things we've practiced, and the players have got to function. So you're saying Moncrief's first start was a kind of an uneven performance? Yeah, man, you know, I don't think that's what happened. I don't think that's what bothered him. But, you know, there's, there's too much inconsistency right now. With Texas A&M coming up, they've got another new quarterback there. He only played this one game. I'm not even sure you've been able to watch any of them, but make it more difficult to prepare for. And what are you expecting now then with them struggling the way they have been? It'll, it'll sort of be a big guessing game. You know, I don't know whether they'll try to be cautious or not. It's certainly not in their philosophy to do that. Uh, we're going to prepare for the regular Texas A&M to come in here throwing it around. Uh, they've got a very good offensive line. They've, the receivers may be the most talented. Uh, they're, they're young. They're not as old as experienced as that crowd last year. But, uh, you know, I know the young man's got great uh, talent and can throw the ball anywhere on the field. It's just a matter of him protecting him and him uh, reading the coverages and those things. The last ball game, they played a lot of heavy sets, you know, two tight ends and things of that nature. But the team they were playing was, was a big blitz team, a lot of zero blitzes and fire zones and stuff. And it could be they want to just clean it up for him. A lot of max protection, two-man routes, very different. So we're going to have to split some time on it. We're going to have to spend time on both, make sure we're prepared for both. Yeah, talk about Chris Frost, the play he made there at the end to pull him back from, from, from when he was about to cross the goal line and just how he's progressed overall. It was just a great effort play. Uh, it forced it to even get to him. You know, from where he was one of the guys blitzing in the A-gaps right up over the center. And turned, chased, and uh, because somebody got him to cut back a little bit, he was able to catch him. Uh, stripping the ball was just, you know, unbelievable. On top of that, you know, getting him, got, grabbed his arm and got it to come out. You know, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure that the injury didn't cause him to let go of that ball. I don't know. It was just also uh, happened so quickly right there. And uh, you know, casting over, getting get to the ball, and good effort to get the ball so that somebody could get on it. But uh, Chris has had, had some really good games. You know, Coach gave him a little helmet sticker out the South Carolina game. He's been a lot more consistent because he's always been a playmaker, but his statistics and his production wasn't good because of his inconsistency. In the last couple of weeks, he's been really good, a lot better in that area. Casanova's been a little better too. I mean, he's, his production's picked up. It's mainly because they're not making as many mistakes as they were, and they're getting around the football better. Do you foresee, not necessarily a comparison, sakes with you starting Moncrief over Holsey, but maybe making other switches and switching things up this week based off the performance that gets Ole Miss? You know, we're, we're right now we've got who we got. And, you know, the fourth guy is right now, Stephen Roberts, true freshman. And he's making progress. And, we, you know, we had to put him in a game we're not afraid to. But, frankly, right now it's kind of a three-way rotation. And we, all those guys have played better at times and, and played more consistent. They just got to follow through. They had a great week of practice last week. But you got to do it on, on the stage, you know. When you get out there, you got to do it on stage. I guess I was speaking more specifically just the entire defense, any position. Oh, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Not really. Uh, you know, like that mixture of pass rush guys we've got going on, you know, you're seeing some new faces in there, maybe some different alignments, whether one was outside and now he's inside and that type of thing. Uh, I need to rotate linebackers a little bit more. Just get into the second rotation and I think it helps those other two play better down through the stretch. What happened, though, I was rotating the first half and the second half our offense had great drives. So there was no fatigue issue. And so I just kind of hung with the starters. But that's, you know, nothing really on the horizon as far as any major personnel shifts. Looking at the film, what do you see as far as, I mean, just from the press box, it looked like there was a lot of tackling issues, on tackles, kind of just not characteristic of what they've been doing. First you know, I, I, you have to say some of them old miss, you know, before you before you go too far because they, they got some really talented guys that make you miss. But the 
all of our accountabilities, there's four major areas, penalties, missed assignments, missed tackles, and then and the last one, of course, is, uh, is finishing plays. All the accountabilities went down this week. They were better. But boy, when we missed a tackle, it would be a glaring missed tackle. You know, the, the one that comes to mind is with the, we shanked the punt to get the ball in the 50-yard line, we're in a little fire zone, and throw the ball to a guy right between two players, and both of them is with. And, and the guys that made a lot of tackles, and Casanova was the second leading tackle in the game, he whiffs, and Jonathan Ford was the leading tackle in the game, and he whiffs. And then Jonathan had another missed tackle on the sweep where he had him head up there. So he had two really ugly looking ones, but then he was the leading tackle on the field. So we had only 11 missed tackles now, 11 missed tackles in that game, but all of them seemed to be real glaring and costly. Sometimes that's the case when you're playing against good athletes, because when you miss them, they turn into something better than, than the average guy. So, you know, it was improvement, believe it or not, but then it's not good enough when you play against a team to level Ole Miss. Ellis, when you have, with finishing plays, I mean, one of the accountabilities in particular, when you have a couple of late hit penalties among them, obviously you want to play with an edge, you want to finish a play, but those are those penalties you look back and say, that's, there's no excuse, really. So how do you tell guys to walk that final? We just, they got to have judgment. You know, if, it would, if they'd gone over and, you know, cheap shot at a guy, that's just both of them, they, they barely touched the guy, but the guy was clearly on the white. You know, you just got to see that, and you got to have better judgment. But nobody knocked anybody over the bench. Nobody cut anybody on the sideline. Nobody went to the head. They just shoved them with their hands, almost in a chase position. And when a kid's running that fast, I mean, that's enough that, you know, he ends up over in the bench. It's dangerous. And that's why, of course, the penalty is there. They're calling it more strict than they did 20 years ago because, I mean, you, you got a risk of injury there. But both of them, they just, they got to pull up. And I mean, they literally a step over across the sideline, they got to pull up. You know, that's the only thing you can do. But we had, you know, had one play that was about a 20 yarder, we get a face mask on the end of that, so that's a 35 yard play. Had a scramble route that they hit. You know, we got a good pass rush, we got good coverage. He starts running around, hits a guy downfield about 18 yards, get another penalty on the end of that one. So that's your 30, about a 30 yard play, you know. And they're getting the gashes in, in four plays ended with either a face mask or a late hit or some kind of holding penalty, which tacks on that hidden yardage that really turns it back into a situation of field position. Now, is it too simple to say that the biggest difference between this year's offense and you know, last year's offense, Texas A&M, is the fact they don't have Manziel and Evans anymore? Do they seem like they tweaked some things about them, or are they basically the same offense well, that you saw? Last the year? route packages look the same. You know, after looking at about five films, same routes. Really good receivers, talented receivers, but not as old. Uh, I don't see as much of the zone read, the quarterback pulling it, being a part of the run, like a kind of like our offense. And then when he pull it, he'd have the option to throw outside. We were dealing with all that last year. And they weren't running Hill that way that much. He could, but they didn't run him that way that much. And they have not used this player that way in that first game. Now, whether we see it, we maybe we will. You know, I think people are going to look and see what you've had problems with. They think they can hurt us with it. They would. I just believe they'll bring the Texas a and offensive playbook in here and, and try to help the young man operate it. And they've got the good enough players around him with the offensive line and skill guys. And I, he's certainly capable of moving the football. When you're preparing for a true freshman who just, just made his first career start, is it, do you ever go back and look at his high school film just to get more looks at him? Or? No. You know, and he has, I think, played in a few late, yeah. late plays. But what we do is we'll create a, a complete tape on just him. What plays did he really do well? What routes did he throw well? What coverages did he hurt? You know, did pressure bother him? Did you know, what bothers him? You know, fire zones or man pressure. We'll try to get some kind of feel for it. But we've really got last week to go on for the most part, and they they were uncharacteristic of what I've seen in Texas A&M, and so I don't expect that to be what they run.